2016. You know, Magic All's got a lot of surprises this year. And, you know, I wasn't quite ready for the surprise that's coming now. Because, you know, after EA Quedding was here a couple of years ago, I said, ah, Black Magicians, I'm not going to let any more Black Magicians into, into Magic All. But then I heard about Billy Brujo's Black Magic Cooking Show. And guess what? It turns out, Billy Brujo, not a bad magician, at least what I've seen. I heard a rumor that today he wants to talk to you about Alphabet of Desire. And that's coming up. But by the way, I, no, I'm not going to tell you that. Without further ado, here is Billy Brujo. Orale! Billy Brujo, estoy aquí. I'm here in the lovely, fabulous uh, temple of the Griff and his lovely mistress. Here at the summit for Golden Dawn, who I'm happy to see being uh, Tumblr friendly and not marginalizing their black brothers. Uh, so, yes, I am here uh, filling the left hand path slot which is funny because I don't really consider myself that. I mean, there is the streak of the dark, but uh, I'm pretty much a nice guy. Um, so yes, uh, and to any of my people out there, like, this is quite a cool place, especially this fireplace. Uh, it's very unique. It has these sigils around the outside. I'm actually recording right now. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll upload this to Facebook. You know, remember Necronomicon? It's got those, like, gates. Bet if you draw this out, you can walk right in through the fireplace. You can break some precious stuff, just like I did. <laughs> anyway. So, the alphabet of desire. A lot of my people, you know, accuse me of being a joker. Um, boy, it's hot under these lights. This is why the boys here are wearing no shirts, because it's hot here under the lights. Um, so a lot of my people often, uh, you know, ask me when I'm going to start doing higher level stuff. And I'm kind of, you know, Mr. Chaos Magic. That seems to be the, the school that accepted me, you know, and likes having me as their spokesmodel. Why wouldn't they? I'm sexy. So, um... Austin Osman Spare, or Spar, uh, you know, I've only ever read it. I've never heard another person say it, so I'm not sure how it's pronounced. Um, which is something fabulous uh, about meeting other magic people, learning how they pronounce some weird word that they've also never heard before. <laughs> so, um, basically, uh, uh, an alphabet of desire is sort of the level two sigil magic. Uh, in sigil magic, you take a, a statement of intent and you uh, jumble the letters all up together until it turns into a cool shape and then you like do the magic woo woo thing and make it go zing. And uh, well, an alphabet of desire is sort of more of an extrapolation on this. Um, well, let's start with a statement of intent, like you would for a sigil. Uh, does anybody does anybody have a statement of intent? I'm doing improv here. I can be led by the audience if they so choose. New job. A new job. Can you, can you, can you, this is Jeopardy. Can you state that as a, like, however you would. I will a new job into, go for it, embellish it a little. Make it up, make it up. Yeah? I'm not really sure. I just, uh, you know, I don't... I want a new job quickly and easily. You know, right? Uh, 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 I manifest a new job quickly and easily. We don't want to create a state of wanting, of course. Uh, don't want to wish for... Don't want to wish for that. Wording these is sometimes a... I... New job... It now. You know, let's do, we'll, we'll do the short, short version. The you, the you, you're married. 
I, new job, now. These are basically the important ideas in what you, in what you said. So, uh, you know, what we need to do is we need to break this down. So, okay, new job, you know, I was hasty. It's actually two ideas. Um, now, the first thing we've got here is I, which already implies duality because you didn't say we. You have a concept of you and you have a concept of other people. So we have duality. So we need like a symbol for the self. We'll use like a, like a stick figure or something. You know, whatever. You just make up whatever. It's your personal alphabet. Um, so we need a symbol for another person. I happen to have a wang. So we'll make the other person the female bathroom sign, uh, just because it's, a, it's just quick and easy. Uh, new. Well, though, what's the opposite of new? It's old. How can we, uh, 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 you know, iconify new? How about with like an egg? You know, right? And old, um, whatever, you know, we'll, we'll use a clock. Um, now a job. A job is kind of a thing. You know, the thing is, is that nouns don't really have anti-nouns um, because they're made of matter. Um, now, even though a job is kind of a, 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 a not a real, but it's still a noun. Uh, uh, we draw like a like a like a like a spiral, like because a spring, lots of working machines got springs in them, you know. Uh, and then, it, you know, now. Okay, so we need now, you know, versus later. Too bad I used the clock. Uh, later can be, or, or now, you know what, how about now is a point. And later, you know, because I already used a clock, let's use an hourglass. Okay, but hey, we got seven symbols. We can maybe come up with an anti-job symbol if we think about it like, uh, you know, but now we have to start considering uh, these symbols as meaning more than they actually mean. Uh, because now, like, we're, we're limiting ourselves to this idea. This is an alphabet. Um, you can already do other things with the symbols that you've implied here, um, such as, this is a job spell, but let's say we want to cast a love spell, because we're lonely, and so I can do I knew other person. No. I can also do I old other person. <laughs> I later other person. I anti job other person. Um, you know. And so, uh, you know, as you meditate, like with any kind of system, you know, it's just now that you've picked these signs instead of 12 signs of the zodiac or four elements or three alchemical principles. Uh, you have these eight symbols. And so, you know, much like how fire is for will, uh, you can also use it for, like, new job stuff. You can use it for inspiration for new artistic endeavors if you're having writer's block or something like that. Um, you know, water, it's for love, but it's also communication, partnership, uh, fertility. Maybe not fertility like childbirth, that's kind of more of an earthy thing, which is also money. And quick luck, like gambler's luck, comes from the earth element. Not sure why. Earth seems so slow for that, doesn't it? But it's pretty much the same herbal components in like herbal magic spells. Okay, so I did bring a toy with me. You know what these are? These are called dice. So however many symbols you end up with when you go home and do this for yourself with a statement of intent of your own, now you have a number. Get a dice of that number. Ask a question. Roll the dice. You now have a system of divination. You can forecast as well as cast spells. 
uh, you know, and with this, you can teach yourself, you know, the language of your own mind. And that's uh, sort of what we're maybe attempting to do, you know, learn how to better communicate with ourselves. Uh, because much, uh, you know, there's much uh, literature about uh, being underneath false wills. And that we don't know what our true will is because we're imperfect human beings. Well, you guys may be. I'm some kind of eldritch abomination. But we got problems too. And a little magic is the glue. Um, so as you continue, you know, to work with your symbols, yeah, you write spells. You write different kinds of spells. Um, I always like to think that the masterwork is to think of this all as a fixed system. Maybe, okay, maybe once in a while you run across an idea and you have to add a symbol. That is allowed. It's chaos magic. You make the rules. Um, because it's whatever you believe. It's whatever your delusion is. You know, people make fun of my face sometimes. But honestly, whatever you're doing in the, in, yeah, you, the viewer, you. But whatever you're doing in your back room with your circle and your robes and your, your robes and your crowns and your, it's just as ridiculous as you think this is. Maybe this is a political statement. I don't know. I don't know what I do. Um, but yes, for like the ultimate goal, um, your homework when you do this for yourself is now take your symbols and try to tell a creation myth based on the Big Bang Theory, if you like. Um, I've done a couple, I've done this class a couple of times with more audience interaction. I had to shorten it because it's a presentation. Um, you know, it's come out different every time. Um, and the ultimate master stroke, I believe, is to write a creation myth off of, you know, what's your favorite creation myth? Uh, originally, I ended up with something where um, it was the story of building the first pyramid. We had a, a, a symbol for the direction of force, which was like an arrowhead. Um, and, and the man and his friend learned the power of the arrowhead and the power of division and opposites, and together they divided the heads off of the animals, and they divided the cool stones out of the earth, and they lived. But then one day my friend, in a poking stick accident, was divided from his body, and his spiritual essence uh, rose out. Spiritual essence was one of the symbols. Um, and my spiritual essence also fell from my eyes and my nose uh, in tears and snot. And, uh, and, and because I saw the animals that eat the other animals, there were symbols for things of wealth, the animals, the stones. The things that eat things, they looked like they wanted to eat my friend. And I still loved him, even though he didn't move. And we had a symbol for growth and change uh, that was like a pyramid. And so I piled rocks on top of my friend so that the wolves could not drag him away. And this is the story of Osiris and the building of the first pyramid, you know, basically in our little experiment that we did. You know, this is the story of the first man and why you pile rocks on top of dead bodies. Because you still love them. Um, I think that's about it. So with your eight symbols here, you know, this will be a little this is our secret language now. Everybody who saw this, so we'll grab our eight-sided dice and we'll play. Because if you're not having a good time, it's your own fault. I am Billy Brujo. And wouldn't you know it, I left my bottle off camera. Oh, hey, you know who else is here? This guy. He drove out to Nevada with me. He got to hang out with other invisible friends 
just like him. He likes to do that. Um, I think that's about it. So, yes, uh, uh, thank you. One and all, uh, workers of the white light, uh, the black light oomph, 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 is happy to be represented here, you know, in the holy temple. And I hope that I haven't, uh, 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 you know, uh, irreversibly stained your premises. I am Billy Brujo, and until next time, keep your spirits up. back shortly. Don't go away because we're not going to be going long at four o'clock. That's in uh, one hour. We have Candace Cant coming up. She'll be talking about Beltane, rights of Beltane, and Walpurgisnacht. That's tonight. Walpurgisnacht! And Magic Ball 2016.